Last year, I sent over 10 million cold emails for more than 35 companies who paid me to handle their outreach. Not a single one was written or sent by hand. AI took care of everything start to finish. But running outreach at this scale shows fast what actually gets replies and what's just a waste of time. Here are the biggest takeaways I wish I knew before I started. Let's start with something a lot of people get wrong even if they've been at this for a while, which is sending too many emails per inbox just to save a bit of money or to keep things simple. Most people in cold email aren't sitting on one lonely inbox. They know you need at least a few, but what usually happens is you start pushing your luck with how many emails you send from each one. Maybe it starts at 25 a day, then 30, then 50, and before you know it, you're sending 70 or more from a single inbox. When I started my agency, I used to do this myself. I didn't want to pay for extra domains and inboxes, so I just slowly notch up the sending volume. For a while, it seemed to work, but then out of nowhere, everything started hitting spam, replies dried up, and suddenly I was spending way more time and money scrambling to fix things than if I just played it safe from the start. What I learned is this, stick with Google Workspace or Outlook. They're just the best for deliverability. Buy two inboxes per domain. Don't get greedy with your sends and cap it at around 20 or maybe 30 emails per inbox per day. Tools like Instantly and Smart Lead make it easy to spread things out and keep everything running quietly in the background. Trying to squeeze more out of each inbox always seems like a good idea until you get burned. So play it safe, go wider, not deeper, and your setup will last way longer. And that actually brings me to another thing I wish I'd learned sooner. I see so many people get obsessed with fixing deliverability. They run every spam test out there, buy inbox reputation tools, tweak their copy, switch up subject lines, and then basically cross their fingers, hoping something just magically fixes itself. If your reply rate drops below 1%, that domain is done. Seriously, don't waste another hour trying to resuscitate it. I've lost more time than I want to admit, running tests and tinkering with that inboxes, hoping something would bounce back. It never ever does. It's always easier to spin up fresh domains and new inboxes, warm them up and get back to sending. Obsessing over fixing a dying domain is like trying to repair a car that's already been totaled. You're way better off getting a new one and just hitting the road again. And if you keep your setup wide enough, like we just talked about, you're never relying on just a handful of inboxes anyway. You just rotate in the new ones, keep everything moving and stop stressing about what's already cooked. Speaking of not making things harder than they need to be, let's talk about follow-ups. I see so many people writing these never ending follow-up chains, six, seven, sometimes even 10 emails deep. It's honestly wild. After sending millions here's what actually happens most of your replies show up after email one a few trickle in from email two maybe some from three or four after that point nobody's reading nobody's responding you're just making it easier for people to hit spam so cap your sequence at three maybe four emails then just stop let time pass a few months a quarter and circle back to that same lead list because the truth is Nobody is keeping track of cold emails from three months ago. They forget, and more importantly, their situation changes. The person who ignored you last time might actually care this time just because something shifted on their end. Don't overthink it. When you come back to recycle the list, update your data, obviously, maybe also tweak your offer to hit them from a new angle. But trust me, you'll always get more replies with a few solid touches and good timing than you ever will from pestering people week after week. And since we're already on the topic of follow-ups, here's something you'll have a hard time finding online. What you actually say in each email and why matters way more than how many you send. If every email in your sequence is just a lazy nudge or a recycled bumping this up, don't be surprised when nobody replies. For the first email, answer the questions, why you're reaching out, why now and what you're offering. Keep it short, the shorter the better. Drop in a quick line of social proof or mention results you've gotten for others to make it tangible and always end with a direct call to action. In the second email, bring the extra context, whatever you had to cut from your first message to keep it as short as possible. If someone was interested but just needed that little bit more info, 
This is where you fill in the blanks. 30 mil is all about lowering friction. Come in with a new angle or just make it stupidly easy to say yes to your offer. Sometimes that's a free resource, sometimes just a software ask. The point is you want their decision to be brain that simple. Personally, I usually add a fourth email this one just asks if they're the right person or gives a slight nudge. That nudge could be anything like seems like getting more business or more leads isn't a priority for your business right now, which ties straight to my personal offer. I've gotten plenty of responses to that one. Not all positive, unfortunately. Bottom line, don't just say bumping previous email. Every message should stand on its own and you're just attacking from different angles since you never know what's actually going to get a yes. So. What did I mean by changing up the angle on your third email? Well, simple. Never just hammer the same point over and over and over again. If your first email was all about saving money and you didn't get a reply, don't just double down, switch it up. Try pitching how you can help them make money. If that doesn't land, talk about saving time. Different people care about different things and you have no idea what will hit until it does. Same goes for when you recycle a list a few months later. Don't just run back the same messaging you used last time, change the value proposition, swap the pain points, update your examples. If you sound like a template, you'll get treated like one and land right in the trash. The point is you're not a broken record. The more angles you hit, the more chances you have to finally connect with what actually matters to that lead. Now, if you want your emails to actually get read, this part matters way more than any trick or subject line. Don't just dump every founder you can at companies from 10 to 1000 employees into one giant lead list. The more segmented your list, the more personal your messaging, the better your results every single time. Most of the real work in cold email happens before you even send anything. If you've already got customers, look at your best ones. What do they have in common? Are they in the same industry? Are they on the same growth stage, specific keywords they use? As I said before, different people care about different things. So find those patterns and build lists of lookalikes so your messaging actually speaks to them. It is honestly not that hard. With the tools out there now, there is no excuse for blasting out emails to the wrong people. If you skip this, you're the reason people say cold email doesn't work. It does work, you just have to do your homework first. Segmentation's the foundation, but you can take it even further. It's not just about building lists of lookalikes. You want to layer your signals. Let's say you're targeting SaaS founders. That's a solid segment, but don't just blast every SaaS founder out there. Narrow it down. Who just raised money? Who's a first time CEO? Who's hiring a sales team right now? Every signal you add makes your list smaller, but way more dialed in. That lets your messaging get specific. One data point is just a guess. Stack three and now you're reaching people with real intent at exactly the right time. So we just covered targeting, but there's another way to level up your reply rate, which is catching people at the right moment. Nothing beats a real timely trigger. My two personal favorites is when someone just started a new role or they just post something on LinkedIn. Mention either one and you're instantly relevant. People are way more likely to reply when you show you're actually paying attention to what's happening in their world, not just blasting out generic intros. That's why these are always the first triggers my workflow looks for. When they're available, that's my opening line every single time. For me, the results speak for themselves. If you want to see exactly how the workflow works, I break it all down step by step. Link is in the description. We just covered using triggers like job changes or recent LinkedIn posts to make your opener feel relevant, but there's more than one way to make your emails feel personal. Something that's worked well for me, not a silver bullet, but it does get noticed, is calling out a case study or a client win from their own website. Most people doing cold outreach at scale are on autopilot. So when you reference something specific, it instantly stands out from all the other AI noise. My automations do the heavy lifting, pulling that info and dropping it right into the email. Honestly, Honestly, I've had plenty of positive replies just because of that little touch. Sometimes it's used in the opener. Sometimes it's a PS in a follow-up. It's just another great way to make your emails feel less like a mass blast and more like it was actually sent by a human. Let's switch gears and talk about testing because this is where so many people waste a ton of time and a ton of leads. I see way too many people obsessing over tiny tweaks like subject lines, the exact wording of their CTA, whether interested beats would you like to chat. Look, if you're sending a million emails a week, maybe you'll spot a difference. But in cold email, unless you're running massive volumes, 
you'll never get enough data to know for sure. And honestly, changing a single word is never what makes or breaks a campaign. So here's what actually matters. Are you testing a completely different offer? Are you switching up the core pain point? Are you reaching out to a new segment? That's where you see real results. Change something big and you'll know right away if it's working because replies will look and sound different, not just the numbers. In my early days, I burned way too many leads, swapping out chat for call or testing seven different subject lines, convinced there was some magic combo. All I did was eat through lists and teach me what doesn't matter. Now, every experiment I run is tracked, logged, and has a clear reason behind it. If it's not a new angle, a new offer, or a new type of lead, I don't even bother with the test. You'll save your sanity, protect your lists, and actually build a playbook that compounds instead of spinning in circles. And since we're talking about weaving in personalized details, here's one more trick. Whenever you use AI or scrape data, always cite your source. For example, if you're using SimilarWeb, don't just write, look like you have 50,000 monthly visitors. Instead say, SimilarWeb shows your site at 50,000 visitors a month. You might be asking why? Well, for two reasons. First, if the info is off, even by a mile, the blame lands on the data, not on you. You're just relaying what you found. Second, citing your source makes it sound like you actually did some research instead of just copying data from a tool. It feels a lot more human. Same thing goes for client wins, funding, or any company info, really. Just a quick according to Crunchbase or saw this on your LinkedIn and you're covered. It's a simple move that keeps your personalization believable and makes your email sound like they actually came from a person, not a bot. And since we're talking about all this AI and automation, let's clear up a massive misconception. I see a lot of people out there who want AI to just take over, write the whole email, do all the personal touches, hit send and hope the leads roll in while you grab a coffee. If only it was that easy. Trust me, we're nowhere close to that. And honestly, I'm not convinced we'll ever get there. Two things happen if you hand the whole job to AI. First, you lose all control over your experience. If every email is different length, style, offer, CTA, you can't spot patterns, so you're just guessing what works. If any of it works, you need consistency to actually get better over time. That is why your core messaging, your main point, your offer, and your CTA should always come from you. Second, there's the quality problem. Even with the best prompts in the world, AI just can't write like a true expert. At best, you get something generic and safe, probably also a little boring. So what actually works, simple, the structure, the offer, the pitch should all be written by you. Then let AI jump in for the details that should feel custom, like calling out their ICP or referencing something from their LinkedIn or their website. Every email keeps your core message and your style, but still comes across as genuinely personal and genuinely one-to-one. -one. That is how you scale your outreach and still get actually meaningful replies. Those are the biggest takeaways that have actually stuck with me after sending millions of cold emails and breaking just about everything in the process. There's always more to learn. The landscape keeps changing and honestly, it gets more interesting every year. If you want to literally copy the same systems I used to send this kind of volume, check out my school community. I'll walk you through building a complete automated cold outreach system step by step. You'll go from zero to a fully operational setup in just 21 days with a community around you to keep you moving and help you land your first client as fast as possible. Check out the link in the description. I'll see you inside.